If you haven't heard of this game, I would like to now introduce you to Icarus. Icarus, this is... Um, yes. Uh, Icarus is a storytelling RPG about the rise and ultimate fall of a society, of a civilization. A society that you're going to build with your friends. It's going to be nicely fleshed out. You'll have uh, your characters in there. You'll be telling an interesting story. But you know where this is going to end. It's going to end in collapse. And uh, I find that interesting. It's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting game. Uh, the components and the, the quality, the production quality of this game is fantastic. I mean, this is a great booklet. Um, it comes with some dice, which, uh, you know, are, are nice. And I'll explain what you do with these in a second. Some cards. So what is the first thing you do with Icarus? Well, you and your group decide on a setting. What is going to be the setting? Is it going to be in the future? Uh, is Icarus going to be in the past, in an old western town or something? If you have trouble coming up with the setting, the book does give you some setting suggestions. But you'll come up with a setting. And then you'll have these uh, Pillar of Society cards. There's a bunch of them here. And you will shuffle those and uh, take out one more than the, than the number of players. So if there's three people playing, you would take out uh, four cards. And each, uh, this is open information. You'll all choose uh, one of these cards that interest you. Now, uh, two players in a three-player game will have to choose the strength. And one player will have to choose the weakness. Okay, once you choose those... You'll then be making uh, notes on those. The game comes with this little booklet here, but you can use index cards. You'll be making a, a quick little note uh, because... Uh, here, I'll give you a quick example. Uh, religion, for instance. Here's a, the strength for religion. The supernatural plays a unifying role in the everyday lives of the people of Icarus. Who or what do they believe in? And what phrase, symbol, or other physical manifestation do they use to express that belief? So you make a little note on an on a index card in answer to that question. And one of the players is going to, whichever one they choose, will read the weakness. And the one that's left over, let's say it's health, well, that's where your uh, monument is going to be built, right? Literally with dice, and I'll explain that in a second. But you will build it on there. But you'll, at this point, decide with your group, what is this monument? And if the leftover card has to do with health, what does that monument do? What does it represent? Okay. And then uh, the next step is these uh, motive cards. Each player will get a motive card and not reveal it. So let's say this is my motive card. I don't show it to the other players. My motive is to protect the leaders. And it's at this point that you start developing your character. What is my name? What do I do in this society? Okay? And then you have the, 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 the story cards. These are the uh, cracks in the facade cards with one little person on there. And uh, these are more mild, right? The five of these will be on, uh, on top of the pack. And uh, on your turn, you will take one of these and read it. For instance, the cracks in our facade. A valuable resource from outside the city has suddenly become much more expensive because of the limited quantity now available. What is it and why is it now in, scar in scarcity? So you would then get one of these aspect papers or index card and write your answer to that and you'll begin to flesh out your society and your story with these index cards on the table next to these uh, cards as well. So each player will respond to one of those, create a card, eventually you'll get to these cards which is the rift between us things get a little more serious for instance an outside force tries to invade the city who are they what is the purpose of the invasion and what's their plan you know create aspect cards eventually you'll get to this the final hours an underground group within the city starts recruiting angry citizens for a private militia what is their cause and who's their leader 
uh, by the time you get to the uh, final hours here, your society will be, you know, your character will be more fleshed out. Your society will be more fleshed out. You've played around with the different, um, uh, you know, aspects on the table. Because on your turn, you will not only be dealing with those cards, but you may choose to change an aspect uh, that's on the table. You may want to improve it or make it worse. And how do you do that? You roll one of these. And if you get that uh, blank side, that means it fails. So that means you have to make a note on the index card or write a new index card uh, explaining how that aspect has become much worse now. If you hit that, then that means it succeeds, so you'll make the change on the index card. Now, of course, another player may want to back you up on that, so now you have two dice uh, to roll. And those go on the on top of this card where your monument is supposed to be, right? And after every turn, a die is added to this. So you're going to get a tower of these, and because they're kind of rounded, at some point, this will collapse. Uh, you know, at the bottom of the deck, you have this black card, which is the bitter end. But usually you don't get to it because by that time, the tower is big enough where it collapses. And uh, when it does collapse, it triggers the end of the game. And you have to answer some questions that are in the book here. And I'll leave those up to you. Uh, I'll leave those to you. Okay. But basically, you, you know, what happens to your character and things of that nature, but it's the end. It's the collapse of the society that you guys just built. That's why I find this game interesting. It's a great, uh, in my opinion, storytelling game um, uh, about a society that you know is going to collapse. So for me, it tilts towards the philosophical. It can be goofy. And of course, it's fun, uh, but, but it tilts towards the philosophical. And you tell some really interesting stories uh, with uh, with Icarus. So um, if you like RPGs or storytelling games, uh, I suggest you go uh, visit Icarus.